The final factor that influences lone pair energy, and therefore both basicity and acidity, is called inductive effects. These are the weakest of the factors that we've examined so far, so they only play a significant role if all other factors, charge, resonance, electronegativity, size, and hybridization, are equal. Inductive effects are caused by nearby electronegative atoms tugging on and therefore stabilizing lone pairs through sigma bonds. The magnitude of these effects are dictated by the actual electronegativity of that nearby atom, the number of those nearby electronegative atoms, and their proximity to the lone pair we're examining. The more electronegative, more numerous, and closer those nearby atoms are, the greater the stabilization of a particular lone pair. Let's see inductive effects in action. Let's compare the basicity of propanoate, 3-chloropropanoate, 2-chloropropanoate, 2,2-dichloropropanoate, and 2,2-difluoropropanoate. They all have the same type of lone pair. On a negatively charged oxygen atom, stabilized by one additional resonance structure with no difference in the hybridization of that oxygen atom. So we examine the nearby atoms. Propanoate has no nearby electronegative atoms, so no inductive stabilization of its lone pair. 3-chloropropanoate has one moderately electronegative chlorine atom a few bonds away from the lone pair so its lone pair is slightly stabilized relative to propanoate. The next compound has a chlorine atom as well, but slightly closer to the basic lone pair, three bonds as opposed to four. So the inductive stabilization is slightly greater. 2,2-dichloropropanoate has two of those electronegative atoms rather than just one. So the inductive stabilization of that lone pair is even greater yet. Finally, in difluoropropanoate, since fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine, this compound's lone pair is inductively stabilized by a substantial amount. It has the lowest energy, most stable lone pair of the series. So the basicity decreases across the series. Extending this logic one step further, we can conclude that the conjugate acids of these compounds have increasing acidity because we know that conjugate acid-base pairs have inverse strength relationships. Stronger conjugate bases have weaker conjugate acids, and weaker conjugate bases have stronger conjugate acids. 